Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Yes the Podcast. I'm back at it again. And how are you doing? Morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching from. Um, Premier League is back. That's the biggest story around. And of course, Thomas Party is scared of the Premier League. Some little Ghanaian teammates um, told him that the Premier League is one glitch that you are never going to joke with. But they also gave him some hope. We are going to be looking at that. A Venga on Jose Marino is since their rivalry. You know, it's escalating ever since 2002 when they had fists, when they exchanged fists um, on the touch line. Um, their rivalry escalates day by day. He didn't include him anywhere in his new book, My, My, My Life in Red and White. And um, he has interesting reasons. Kiantian could be missing the Manchester City game, that is bad news, but however, we also have a story about Asen Benga and Mikel Ateta. Um, he thinks Mikel Ateta could be his perfect successor and he thinks Ateta is going to be a great, great manager. Why don't we start with those four today? Those four stories and then we can progress. Thanks for everybody who enjoyed the quiz yesterday. How many goals did Osil score in the Premier League in his 148 appearances for Arsenal? The answer was 55. Um, thanks for everybody who participated in the quiz. And today, the question is, in the quiz, the question is, how many games did we win in our unbeaten run? How many games did we win in our unbeaten run? Check the video description for the answers or right below in this video, you can see below the options are there. How many goals did we score? in the unbeaten run sorry how many games did we win in the unbeaten run 2004 the invisibles okay i'm getting the party started first and foremost now thomas party was told by jaden iu that the premier league is one of the hardest leagues you, you know he's ever going to play in and he said you know he told him that if you are not prepared for the premier league you are not going to manage now you remember iu um played with West Ham and then I think the brother now plays with Aston Villa. But I don't re I, I, I don't remember Jordan Ayu having I, I don't remember Jordan Ayu having um you know a, a, a rough time at West Ham. I think he's one of those players that were really, really talented. Very talented. Actually uh, both of the Ayus are really talented. They are very talented, they, you know, they are these kind of players that, you know, you would want to see um, on the front line because they are really talented, they know how to score the goals and they are not the traditional kind of nine, um, they are this kind of talent, they can play um, along that, you know, forward line very well. So, Pat, of course, you know, he's Ghanaian and, you know, he had to meet up with his teammates, they had to con congratulate him and so on. They told him, are you? told him that you know the Premier League is a very hard league and you you know you've got to put in all you got if you're going to play in the Premier League. Um, more interesting, he told him that um, however you have the qualities to play in the Premier League, you just need to work hard. Now both statements are correct. That's the truth. But you know both statements are correct. Uh, Premier League is not an easy league. Every team is so ambitious from 20th to the first team. They are very, very ambitious. If you look at Leeds, playing on, you know, play, play, how they play against City, how they play against, you know, big clubs, you can't imagine that they were just promoted. The intensity, the kind of football in the Premier League cannot be found anywhere across the world. Anywhere. Because if you look at the French League, uh, the competition is around, is between seven, seven clubs. Of, you know, minus PSG because PSG doesn't have any competition. If you look at the Spanish, you know, La Liga, Barcelona and Barcelona, Real Madrid and Leco Madrid, okay, plus Sevilla, have that kind of small league and then these other small clubs have absolutely no chance. If you look at Italian Serie A where, you know, Juventus have won this, you know, league almost as long as they want, same place to German, Bundesliga, it's Bayern, Dortmund, Leverkusen. So, 
it's like the Premier League is, a, you know, is this kind of league where everybody believes they can do it. We have seen Manchester City, this, you know, they, they, they started so badly. Manchester United, give it, no, thumped by Crystal Palace, 3-1. So I think in the Premier League, every you know every every team is almost a big team because if you're going to play against a, a, a team like Everton, they're not a top four, a top six member. They have not qualified for Champions League. I don't know in how many years. They have not qualified for the for the Europa League in, in I don't know in how many years. But just look at their midfield right now. Look at Wolves. Look at Leeds. Every team has that kind of special thing. And they can get a point, if not three, from you. So I think that is the you know, that is why the Premier League is still one of the most and favorite leagues around the world. It has extra competition, twenty clubs, each with a unique feature that adds to the competition in the league. Leicester City, because if you look at clubs like Le Le Leicester City, they were promoted. At, uh, Le Leicester City were promoted, you know. In the same season, they struggled. They were, you know, they, they, they were fighting relegation. The next season, without adding so many players, without adding, you know, so much of, you know, expensive players, they won the league. Last season, Sheffield United was one of the big ten, you know, clubs, beating almost everybody, getting points from the, you know, from members of the top six so easily. So it's not going to be an easy league. It is, you know, it has a lot of pace. It has a lot of energy. I think Thomas Partey must not, but but he has the qualities. That is just a true statement. He has the qualities to play in the Premier League. He's, you know, when you look at his height, six feet, that is that is enough height. How long do you want to be? How tall do you want to be? Like like like, like Peter Crouch. I think you know he has the qualities, the energy, the speed, the pace. You know, the resilience. I think all those attributes will help Thomas Partey thrive into the Premier League. I don't think he's going to be a failure, but you know, personally, even if he starts again in Manchester City, I know we are just, we are going to feel his impact right away. He has one advantage that is coming in a side where you know, where, you know, he's joining a side which is hungry of his services. No one is giving us what he gives us, so we are not going to compare him to anyone. He's better than Jaka, he's better than Shibayas, he's better than everyone, you know, everyone at what he does. Obviously better than Momo El Nene. So the best thing he has to do, calm down, be confident, train hard, do your thing, deliver on the pitch. That is it. 50 million is not the worst. So I don't want Peter, you know, Pata to be scared of, of, of this kind of thing. You know, Premier League is not an easy league, but how come? There are so many successful players, um, you know, from the Premier League. And what's even more, 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 more interesting, some of the most, you know, successful players that are winning the Ballon d'Or are not coming from the, from, from, from the Premier League. So there isn't anything, you know, for us to be scared of. Nothing. If you look at the, 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 the last 10 times the Ballon d'Or has been won, it has not come from the Premier League. It, it has been coming from the Spanish La Liga. Messi, Ronaldo, Modric. It's coming from the Spanish La Liga. When did we last have a Ballon d'Or winner? Cristiano Ronaldo. Maybe the fact that we have, you know, we have a lot of money in the league, we have a lot of you know, top quality talents, maybe that, but I don't think that is a reason for Thomas Partey to be scared. Now, I said Wenger, this is story number two, so moving on. Um, Wenger says Mikel Arteta could be one of the next generation's biggest managers, top managers, um, based on what he does. Um, of course, if you look at what Mikel Arteta is doing right now, there is absolutely no doubt that he's going to become one of the biggest managers around the world. He doesn't have the tools to do the job well, but he's doing the job well before he gets the tools. Because if you look at last season, how he managed to win some silverware, when clubs like Manchester United lost three consecutive semi-finals we managed to grab some silverware we never had the tools we had the worst defense in europe the worst defense we had the worst midfield in europe we only had you know an attack 
made up of one man, a Bameyang, and a goalkeeper, Ban Leno. But he managed to get, you know, grab some silverware. Right now he's getting, you know, he's building his own team, building this, the, the, the tools, polishing the tools. If he can move at that rate, at any rate, he's going to become one of the biggest managers. Because if you look at how Diego Simeone made his name, it, it, it was around two, three seasons. He made Aleko Madrid one of the biggest, you know, most feared teams in Europe. You know, take them to two UEFA, you know, UEFA Champions League finals, win the Spanish La Liga. What else did he do? Nothing. Maintain top four. Qualify for the Champions League day in, day out, season in, season out. Simeone is now one of the biggest names in football. If you look at, if you look at managers like, like Hansi Flick and the others, they have the tools. Ateta doesn't have the tools yet. But the quality he puts on paper guarantees you that you know, he's going to be one of the biggest names football has ever mentioned. So probably, um, I want him to be at Arsenal for the next 20 years. If we can give him the tools. Of course, if we, if we cannot give them tools, I've already said this. Managers like, you know, Ateta, that young, you know, that, that, that fresh blood is needed so much. And right, right now, Real Madrid are looking around who can actually take us to glory. Barcelona also thinking about the same thing. Pr probably if Hansi Flick leaves um, Bayern, they'll need someone younger you know, to take them through at least five years. And Mikel Ateta can do that. So I think... Because, you know, I think Arsene Wenger is right. Ateta, next generation manager, he is. But of course, there, there are so many things he has to do uh, to, to, to prove to us. We need to go back to the Champions League. You need to win some silverware, some serious silverware. FA Cup, is a, you know, it's a serious silverware, but no. We need to do better than that. Anyway, there we go. Um, and then, Mikel, uh, Arsene Wenger's rivalry with Moreno grows every day. He explained why he never included Jose Moreno in his new book, My, My Life in, in, in Red and White. And he said he wrote this book as a positive book, not a book to sort out issues. And he said for him he considers the greatest, his, you know, his greatest, the greatest rivalry was between Sir Alexander Chapman you know, Ferguson and him, not Jose Moreno, because Moreno spent two spells at, um, at, uh, at Chelsea, you, you still remember, and Arsene Wenger was at Arsenal for 22 years, but he says for him his fiercest enemy was, was Sir Alex Chapman, you know, Chapman Ferguson, not Jose Moreno. I also agree with him. I think Jose Moreno was, you know, was this kind of guy with, you know, mind games, he wants to threaten you and do all those kind of stuff. And of course, Arsene Wenger, 22 years in the game, you know, you don't, you know, you, you don't just bump out of, you know, Portugal and then you start, you know, threatening him with those, you know, kind of little threats. Um, I think Arsenal's greatest rivalry, you know, was was with Manchester United because almost United achieved everything Arsenal, you know, had to achieve at the time when Arsenal thought or when we thought. We were ready to achieve that. They won the Premier League more times than we did, but we never, we, know, we were never that bad. Chelsea, Ch Ch Chelsea are not that big. Chelsea are not that, you know, the rivals that you think about. Yes, they are London Ravens and so on, but if you look at, you know, on paper, realistically, it's Manchester United. It was Sir Alexander German Ferguson. Right now, maybe Chelsea are our rivals because United is, you know, is dying every day. They die. But apart from that, I think um, Wenger is right. Moreno was not a match. Moreno was not a match for us and Wenger. And you know, Moreno never stays in one place for you know um, for a long period of time. You know, he will be at Chelsea for two years. Um, he goes to Inter Milan for another two years. He goes to uh, Real Madrid for another two years. So um, he's um, he's a football wanderer. Anyway, um, Kian Tiani could be missing out the Manchester City game. Uh, we are still waiting for the official confirmation and um, statement to confirm whether we can actually include him into the squad or we cannot actually include him. But if we cannot um, get that 
you know, if, if we can't get that assurance as early as possible, then it's going to miss out on the Manchester City uh, game, which is going to be very, very bad because we don't have another, we, we don't have uh, another option. We don't have another option um, in the left back. Sid Kolasinac, no one wants to see Sid Kolasinac in our team. No one wants to see Sid Kolasinac in our team. That's the truth. So, um, Kiantian is going to be a big blow. It's going to be a very, very big blow. But that is what I have for you this morning. Uh, thank you for staying with me right now. Yeah, but then,